Today I'm going to show five new data engineering tools in, that we're releasing in ArcGIS Pro 2.7. So these are tools that help you with the cleaning and preparation of your data in advance of mapping or analysis. So the new tools are Transform Field, Standardize Field, Reclassify Field, and Encode Field, which will be in the Data Management Toolbox, and Dimension Reduction, which will be in the Spatial Stats Toolbox. So let's have a look at these in Pro. So the first tool we'll look at is the transform fields tool. So I have for all counties in the United States population density data. I have looked at the population density in the chart and the map and seen that it's strongly positively skewed. So I want to use the transform field tool to normalize this data. The transformation methods available are inverse, square root, log, and box clocks, which is a type of power transform. For box clocks, I can specify power or shift optionally. If you don't specify these, we calculate it automatically using the MLE method. So let's have a look at the results once I run the tool with this parameter and we see that my field is now normalized. So the second tool we'll look at is standardize. So let's say I'm interested in analyzing these two fields, median household income and unemployment rate. We see they're both fairly normal. However, the x-axis scales are very different values. So we'll use the standardized field tool to scale these values accordingly. So the standardization methods available within this tool are z-score, min-max, absolute maximum, and robust. Like this transform field tool, I can specify either one input field or multiple. So once I run this tool with these parameters to get the z-score, we see that the shape of the data is unchanged. However, the x-axes are both on the same scale now. So next, we'll look at reclassify. So let's say I'm interested in the median home value for each county in the United States. I've symbolized this using symbology with 10 quantiles. However, I want to actually use these quantiles for my analysis. So I need to I need to get quantiles 1 to 10 as part of my data in your field. So I'll use the reclassify field tool with the reclassification method of quantile. And you'll notice that all of these reclassification methods available in the tool are the same as the reclassification methods available in Symbology. So once I run the tool with these parameters, and then symbolized by that, that new field, the data looks exactly the same, but my new field now has values of one to 10. So the fourth new tool is encode field. Let's say I'm interested in doing some spatial statistics, for example, using a regression tool, but my, my tool does not support a categorical field. But I want to do some analysis with this field of the predominant race and origin of each county. Therefore, I need to encode this field to make it a numerical variable. I can use the new encode field tool to encode this categorical field into a 0-1 indicator field. So let's have a look at what that tool looks like. It's a very simple UI. The encoding methods available are one hot encoding, which is what you see in the table, one cold encoding, which is the opposite. We switch zeros with ones and the ones with zeros and temporal encoding, which is a method that supports encoding of a date field. The fifth and final new tool is dimension reduction. So for each county in the United States, I have population distribution data. These are 18 fields, but if I want to try and understand the pattern in these fields for each county, or I want to do some, some modeling with these fields, for example, using a regression tool, there are very many fields, and also these fields are highly correlated. So first, I might want to run these fields through the new dimension reduction tool. What the dimension reduction tool does is it takes many variables and reduces these to fewer dimensions whilst maintaining as much variability from the original variables as possible. The methods available in the new dimension reduction tool are PCA, principal component analysis, 
and ALDA, linear discriminant analysis, which is similar to PCA, but it includes classes. You can specify in the tool the minimum percent of variance you'd like to maintain, up to 100% of your original variance, or and the minimum number of components you'd like to maintain, up to the number of input fields. Once I run the tool, the tool gives me back four new variables, which are my four components. Because I didn't specify the minimum percent variance to maintain or the minimum number of components to maintain, the tool used a permanent permutation test to automatically calculate the optimal number of components. So let's have a look at the variance captured in each of these new components. If we look at the scree plot, which the tool automatically produces, we can see in descending order the percent variance explained. So the first component or the first new variable explains over 55% of the original variance from the original variables and so on. The total variance explained by the first four components that the tool returned is 91.2%. So to try and understand what these new components actually mean, we can have a look at the eigenvectors chart, which the tool automatically produces. Here's the eigenvectors of the first three components. So I'll turn off two and three, and we'll look at one first on the map and in the chart. So eigenvector one is used to create component one. This chart shows us how the original fields map to the new components. We see that where the values of the, the component one are high is where the population is young. And when the values of component one are low is where population is older. Let's look at, at component two, where we see an interesting pattern on the chart whereby the highest values are where the population is between 15 and 25%. With some investigation on the map, we find that this correlates with college towns. For example, this county has a high value for component two, and this is where Washington State is located. And similarly, this county is where Penn State is located. Let's look at the final eigenvector on the chart and also on the map. We find that we see that the final eigenvector appears to have higher values for the working age population, with correlate, which correlates with what we see on the map where the high values are located in large metropolitan areas such as Los Angeles, the Bay Area, Seattle, and Denver. So that's the five new tools. Thank you. Mm -hmm.